Welcome to 22 in 22 slash 23. Today's topic is breasts. We'll specifically be talking about breasts and those with female anatomy. So in case you have male anatomy and are wondering about a little bit of breast formation in you, stay tuned. We'll have a little bit more in the male puberty video. So first things first, size. What size is normal, sufficient, too large, too small? The answer ultimately is it's genetic. And a lot of what is going to contribute to the size of an individual's breasts is going to be based on what's in their DNA. And that's just kind of the way it is. If someone is wondering about how to get larger breasts, the answer is generally, there's not a natural way to do so besides putting on a little extra weight. Putting on a little extra weight distributes fat throughout the body and may also go to the breasts. Similarly, individuals often wonder how they can get smaller breasts if the breasts are too large, uncomfortable. Um, sometimes the breasts are so large they can be painful and give you some back pain. Um, and unfortunately, again, there's not a whole lot to be done naturally uh, to reduce the size of breasts. But keep in mind that what you have is what you are given and it's fabulous. Uh, it, it sometimes can be very uncomfortable. The grass is always greener, but there are pros and cons to larger or smaller breasts. So try to love what you have. And if you have any questions, concerns, issues, chat with your doctor. Another note on size is that it is normal for one breast to be a little bit larger than the other, especially during puberty, but that can also last beyond puberty as well. Nothing really wrong with it. Uh, it's just the way that breasts are. In fact, most people probably, if you took very specific detailed measurements, two breasts would not be exactly the same. So a little difference in size, totally normal. Now, when we're talking about size, it's also important to talk about composition or what makes a breast a breast. And that's underlying mammary tissue. So ducts and glands that are mammary tissue that ultimately are there to potentially produce milk. But everyone's breasts are going to feel a little bit different. Some people, in fact, have more of a, like a fibrocystic kind of a breast. You might feel some nodules, um, some changes with menstrual pattern. And so the point of this is to say that breast tissue can be a scary area for a lot of people who may detect lumps or bumps. So it's important to get to know your breast tissue as early as possible. So start with some breast exams when you're younger. So we usually recommend doing it around the same time of the month because the tissue can change in response to some of the hormones that guide periods. And so we recommend one of two ways of doing a self breast exam. So by pulling the arm up, um, either going in and up and down motion to cover all of the breast tissue or going in a circular pattern to cover all the breast tissue and just feeling with two or three fingers and getting to know your, your breast tissue. Also keep in mind that breast tissue itself is more in a teardrop. So it comes to a point up in the armpit and then extends to a larger area, circular area. So it looks like a teardrop. Um, and so don't forget the tissue up higher toward the armpit as well. The chance of breast cancer in someone who is young, teenager, 20s, is very, very minimal. That being said, if you have any lumps or bumps that you are concerned about, certainly talk with your doctor, but rest assured that the chance of having breast cancer is going to be very small when you are younger. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is sort of the shape of breasts. So because everyone's mammary tissue is a little bit different, it can provide a little bit of a difference in what we would call structural integrity of the breast. So some people have very full, round, larger breasts, and others have almost where the breast can come to a point with the nipple. And either one is very normal, depending on who you are and your body type. Um, but a lot of people are especially self-conscious about their nipples. And so 
quickly to review nipples are going to be where the mammary ducts and glands ultimately secrete that potential milk for milk production. Um, they're usually located in the center of the breast tissue and there is the nipple and then it's surrounded by an areola, so a darker area of skin. I get many questions on the size of the areola. There are a variety of sizes of the areola that are normal. They can be very large or they can be smaller. It's also normal to have little glands on the areola called Montgomery glands. They just secrete a little healthy oil, very normal. It's also healthy to have some hair on the nipples or the areola, very normal. Now, when it comes to nipples, an inverted nipple may also be normal. Some people are born with inverted nipples, sometimes one, sometimes both. And during puberty, they may turn out or pop out or they may stay inward. For the most part, concerns about inverted nipples arise when someone is considering breastfeeding. And for the most part, individuals with inverted nipples do not have any contraindications or reasons to not try breastfeeding and it can work just fine. It's just that sometimes the nipples are inward and sometimes they are outward. And again, that can be very normal if you have concerns, chat with your doctor, but nothing to panic or be concerned about. One may be inverted, both may be inverted. It can be very normal. Lastly, talking about milk production. So milk production happens naturally when someone has a baby, but there is a little bit of fluid production when you're not having a baby. And it's quite possible whether you have male anatomy or female anatomy to be able to squeeze out a little bit of fluid. And that is very normal. So try not to force it, but a little clear, white, yellowish discharge when you squeeze your breast tissue to come out, very normal. Male or female anatomy, don't panic. On to your questions. Question number one. I'm female, 19, and I had this tiny bump under my right boob. It first appeared when I came home from a hot day at work, and as I was removing it, I was itchy all over, even under the breasts. I felt a welt under my boob, and I assumed it was the laundry detergent, along with my sweating that day. It's been there for at least three to four days, and it's shrinking slowly. It doesn't feel hard, and is less noticeable most of the time. I'm currently without health care, but am I okay? So <laughs> um, this is a longer question. I suspect you've already sort of identified it, that you do have sensitive skin. You probably have a little plugged up sweat gland or an inflamed hair follicle. That would be very normal when someone is especially sweaty. Now, while this question may not have to do exactly with the breasts themselves, it's important to know that the area under the breasts is kind of like the armpits and that it is a moister area because there is extra skin there and it's very easy to get some skin conditions underneath the breasts, including inflamed hair follicles. Sometimes people get yeast infections under the breast. Um, so it's important, especially if someone is exercising and you're more prone to skin infections like this, change your bra. Get out of that sweaty, hot bra as soon as you can. Towel off um, just to make sure we keep the air flowing because the skin under the breast is just as susceptible to some funny skin things and infections like under the armpits and between the legs too. Question number two. I'm 16 and my breast has been hurting today. I've had it a few times over the years. I squeezed my nipple and a little liquid came out. Should I be worried? I'm a bit worried. I hope you can help. So, so first of all, I think there's probably two separate things going on. For, to squeeze the breast, like I was saying, it is possible to get some fluid out. Now, if your breast is hurting, there are a few different things that could be. One, it's very normal with hormone fluctuations that happen throughout the menstrual cycle um, that breasts can be more tender than usual. So if it's around the time of your period, it's very normal to have more tender breasts. Um, so maybe that's what's going on. So maybe look at how you're, where you are in your 
flow uh, in your cycle and see if there's any syncing up between your breasts hurting and your period. The other things that can happen is that your mammary tissue, your mammary ducts can get plugged up. And some people are just more prone to this than others, but if you do notice any abnormal drainage from your breasts, if there's any blood in the drainage, if it looks like pus, um, or if your breasts are especially red or the area around the nipple is red, that might actually be an infection. And so you should talk to your doctor. But um, it, so it could be one of the two things, either infection or correlating with some hormone changes. Question number three, I'm 16 and recently felt a weird marble-like thing in my left breast. It's only in the left one, and it's easily moved around, but then pops back to the same spot. It doesn't hurt or anything. I'm just thinking it's something like a fibroadenoma, and I'm really worried. Okay, so someone Googled this, and the again, the, the breast tissue is going to be different from person to person, and so it's wonderful that you're feeling uh, things. And first of all, it could be a normal variation in your breast tissue and especially if you feel it in the left one it's great that you're able to move it around that's a reassuring sign um, I wouldn't be too worried about it at all I suspect it's just a variation in your breast tissue it may be a little bit of fiber so fiber um, lump or it might be a cyst so like a pocket of fluid um, that probably will fluctuate with your menstrual cycle so I'm glad you're going to see the doctor in the meantime, don't panic. You are very young. The chance of it being anything scary is minimal. It's probably some sort of a fibrocystic thing in your breasts. And hopefully the doctor will talk you through regular checkups and making sure that it goes away or changes in size. All of those are reassuring things to suggest that it's being driven by the hormones um, in your body and your menstrual cycle. So uh, I suspect it's nothing or nothing concerning. Question number four. One of my breasts or nipples is red and painful. What is this? Okay, so this is probably what I was talking about with an infection. Um, it's very possible. So the nipple is an opening to the outside of the skin and it is possible to get infection. So either some bacteria or yeast getting into the nipple or um, one of the glands getting plugged up and having some bacteria sitting there. So uh, usually the first thing we would recommend trying is doing what we would call a warm compress. So holding a warm wet washcloth or a heating pad on your breast for like 10 minutes at a time, a couple times a day to see if that can help open things up and help drainage. But if that doesn't work definitely talk with your doctor to see if you might need like an antibiotic or a yeast medication but um, it's it's quite possible that it's a plugged up um, mammary gland and that can be relieved by oh, some warm compresses generally question number five one of my nipples is inverted will it eventually pop out so maybe and maybe not uh, Inverted nipples, very normal. It's very normal to have one inverted or both, and it may or may not pop out, and that's okay. Question number six, is it normal to have hair on your nipples? Yep, we have hair follicles all over our body, and hair on the breasts is no exception, so hairy nipples is fine. Question seven, I'm super self-conscious about my nipples. They're kind of long and pointy. What can I do about them? So like I was talking about in the introduction, there are a variety of different types of nipples and it can be very common for nipples to be a little bit longer and sometimes they're very small. Um, that would be okay. There's a specific type that um, can be helped with surgery, um, but that's a very long, like a tuberous nipple, but otherwise, it's generally okay. So chat with your doctor if you have any concerns, but, but I suspect your nipples are just fine. Question number eight. Is it weird or normal to have one big breast and one smaller breast, or what should I do about it? So it can be common to have one breast that's larger than the other. Any significant size difference would be relatively uncommon, but not impossible. Um, 
And the other thing is that especially if you're going through puberty, um, it's, it's very possible for one to be significantly larger than the other. So don't panic, but if there's a huge difference, it's probably worth talking with the doctor. But I would suspect that um, you're very normal. Question number nine. Is there a way to make my breasts grow naturally? So, aside from putting on a little extra weight and anticipating that extra fat will be distributed throughout your body, there's really not a natural way, there aren't any supplements or medications that are really proven to make breasts larger. Um, if you're still going through puberty, give it a little bit more time because they can certainly grow slowly over the course of many years. But if you're through puberty, um, there aren't really natural ways. But I hope you can find a way to love what you have. Everyone is different and like I said earlier, the grass is always greener. So um, I suspect you're perfect the way you are. Question 10. What happens if you don't wear a bra? This is my favorite because nothing happens. You can wear a bra, you don't have to. Bras are especially helpful for individuals who have larger breasts um, from day to day. There's There can be a lot of back pain associated with larger breasts and so um, the a good bra can really provide some good support. Um, for the back and especially also during exercise. A bra can help stabilize things, but you don't have to wear a bra. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for more.